Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. Uh, we are uh, re-looking at health today. You know, when we started this podcast, you really didn't know a lot about about tabletop games and no. rpgs it's true and we did an episode about health which is why it's a retro episode uh a revisiting, revisiting if you will yeah i forget what we talked about way back then because it was about four years ago but i want to ask you nathan you have sure. had the chance to run a game and yeah. at least be in a couple rpgs yes yeah. since we've started this podcast and I want to know what you have learned about health, hit points, stuff that uh, makes you healthy and not dead in games. I want to know what you've learned, yeah. what you, your experience has been like, what you kind of like with them, what you might not like with them. Mm -hmm. Give me mm -hmm. your uh, wealth of experience that is not as limited. Here's what I know. Uh, hit points are things. Good job. Episode over. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Hope this was very beneficial to you. Uh, oh, okay, so I guess I guess the thing that is interesting for me is, uh, you know, my my only real experience with role playing came from video games. So I know how hit points work in video games. You know, you have you have the game, and uh, you have a number of hit points, and when the hit points run out, <laughs> because people are probably shooting you you you're done and it's game over and you got to reload a save file in tabletop games you you unfortunately do not have save points which uh i still think is an egregious error that must be fixed more than that is uh that's not necessarily what happens when you're playing um even in a, a system like uh the one that i was running in or if you're playing the D&D &D, your your hit points don't work that way if if i'm in D&D &D and i had to get used to this uh, I get to zero hit points. Oh, no, my character is gone. No, no, it's not. You, uh, you don't go to negative hit points. So, like, if I took, like, 15 damage and I only had 10 hit points, now I'm just at zero. And you go into, uh, death saving throws. Well, for 5e, yes. Uh, 3.5 D&D, you actually would get into negatives. Oh, okay. Um, and, and you can have some where you get into negatives, depending on the system, but... Oh. So how did that... Well, I think for, like, 3-5, you were knocked out at 0, and oh. between 0 and negative 10, you oh, were considered, okay. like, dying. Oh, okay. Okay. Or, or you were unconscious, and if you hit negative 10, you were just, like, dead. You're just dead. You're just gone. You're just outright dead. I see. Yeah, because I always wondered, like, you know, if you're going to make a system where zero is not the end, um, where is the end? <laughs> like, t technically. So if you're if you're out, like in the three point five system. So if you're out, but you're not down to negative ten, you still have a chance for somebody to bring you back up or heal you, and then you're back in the fight. Yeah. Okay. All right. Essentially, I mean, you might not be back in the fight, but you're not dead either. You're stabilized. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that was a thing, stabilizing people that were dying. When I was playing uh, my tabaxi, I keep wanting to say a Khajiit, but when I was tooling around with a, a tabaxi character that I called Percy Jackson. I hate you. For one of DC's modules, my tabaxi monk uh, actually went into saving death saving throws twice in that adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and and in that one in that case for 5e if you fail three times in a row you're dead right yeah and i got oh yeah. even worse i got a critical fail which means that you actually it counts as two uh death uh death failures out of your three see i feel like that's a weird mechanic because mm -hmm. it's like you're making a saving throw for something yep. that you can't really do it's automatic it would be yeah. Just your body's way of reacting here is it's trying to live. And it's like, oh, I, right. I critically failed at trying to live. <laughs> it's like, I'm really bad at living. I'm guys. wondering, like, what does a critical fail for that mean? 
Yeah. Like, does it mean that, oh, my kidney just ruptured? <laughs> yeah. As far as I understood, there's like, there's, there's the three. You have to get three. And if you, you fail on one of those throws, uh, you get one point toward the, the die category. But if you get a critical failure, it's two points. And if you got a critical, if, if you got a critical hit, it would be two to the live category. Yeah. It's a really, it's really weird. Honestly, I'm actually not sure what happens. Like, if you get the three lives, and you're, I, I feel like honestly, the way it ends up working, we had a couple health potions. I did not necessarily have them in hand. I had one. You, you pour them down someone's throat, right? Yeah, pretty much. You try it. You try hard. I think that it's pretty much, for the most part, implemented. At least this is the way I, I felt to prolong that process long enough that hopefully somebody can stabilize you before we find out what happens. It's a really weird mechanic, honestly. I, I think it's kind of there just to try and prevent the whole thing where your character just outright dies off. It's really hard to outright die off in a game that doesn't give you, like, wounds. Because you don't take wounds in D&D. As opposed to, like, Warhammer 40k, where you take wounds, and the critical right. hit damage right. is, like, brutal. It's like, oh, you lost an arm. Yeah. Hoopsies. Yeah, oopsie And the healing in that game, and the healing in, in that type of system is like, all right, cool, well, light wounds are easier to heal from, because a scratch is kind of something that just kind of heals quick. But if you get, like, a chunk of your flesh bitten out, then it takes a while to freaking heal that. Because you're missing a chunk of flesh. Right. Hit points have always been this really weird, like, idea in D&D, because it's like, you don't go, I stabbed this person with my sword, now they're bleeding out. Yeah. That's not something that happens in D&D. No. Do they have anything, like, uh, prolonged damage, like, if you have bleeding damage, where, like, every... Like every, uh, turn, you, you start taking bleeding damage they, because... They might. wounds. In some of them, but I don't, I don't know offhand any rules that are like that for D and D. Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird because I don't see a ton of systems that do that. It's usually um, the actual skills that uh, someone possesses that says that over X number of minutes or whatever. Yeah, like um, there are certain spells like uh, entangle. Yeah, or, or briar thorns or whatever that one is. You entangle. Take. Like if you're in this prolonged period like if you're standing in fire you right. take damage every round right but there's there's not really a you bleed for x amount of rounds or until you heal yeah. this yeah, yeah, yeah or until you treat this which is really interesting because again D D doesn't really go into the well you got wounded you yeah. got like a gash across your chest you're bleeding you've got negatives it doesn't like you don't get hurt and then yeah. suffer penalties from getting hurt. That's what I think is really interesting, because the one thing that's really strange about hit points, and it was always strange about hit points, uh, from everything, it doesn't, it doesn't even matter if you're talking about video games or tabletop at that point, is that very idea that hit points are not particularly realistic when you're when you're talking about a character, because you have that, thing, that whole thing, like, I'm playing Fallout, and now, uh, you know, oh, it says that your limbs are crippled. Okay, I'm going to put a stim pack in it. Oh, my limb is back up to full hit points. All done. <laughs> Yay. You know, <laughs> Austin of the science from Game Theorist has yeah, done yeah. something on stim packs. Yeah. So if you really want to get into the, the, the science of how stim packs work, you can go check out the Game Theorist. Yeah. He's, got an, he's got a video. Okay. Or it might have been from ShoddyCast. He did a thing about it. Yeah. And how they could work. Yeah. And it's interesting. Yeah. But they are not realistic in that sense, no. Like, yeah. healing potions, on the other hand, are more so realistic because it's magic. Right. So you can hand wave that away and just say, well, it's magic. Yeah. So it works. Right. I mean, I suppose that if you really want to, you know, suspend your disbelief here <laughs> you could just say that in a world where there is magic um maybe maybe hit points do make sense but if we were just talking about the the general idea of heroes going out or fighting a war essentially hit points don't make a lot of sense like if i if i end up with uh, a virus 
and I'm sitting here like, oh my god, I, I'm, I feel like I have the flu, I must be losing hit points. People would be like, no dude, you don't have actual hit points. And Did we ever do an episode about how there's like no real just like flu in D&D typically? No, you know what we did do? We did an episode where, um, where we were talking about different like status effects. Yeah, that you I remember have. that one. I don't think, see, that's one of those things mm. is I've always wondered like, D&D there's not really, there isn't, there isn't necessarily, but there's not really like, oh, there's just a ton of people to cold. Oh, yeah, like, oh, and the interesting thing about that is that wouldn't that be interesting for, uh, for storylines, like if you literally had a plague? Well, you can do that. There's, there's like magical diseases and stuff like that you can have. Yeah. And all sorts of diseases that are in there. Right. But, but how like, could you? How would you uh, contract them? How would you like? They, they they have a lot of things in the book on how you can have it. Like there's diseases yeah. you can get from rats. There's diseases okay. you can get from uh, other animals and whatnot. So and mu- like mummy rot, magical diseases, um, plagues. But like a single high level cleric would be able to like get rid of all of that, or a paladin. So it's like you could do a campaign where it's like, oh well, there's a a, a ton of disease throughout here and you just like yeah we're gonna have a party of clerics and we're just gonna go sweep through this the countryside and just cure everyone yeah but on the flip side then you have druids who have like contagion or yeah. wizards who have contagion where they're like yeah you can give a subject a disease or a curse and it's or bestow maybe that one's what i'm thinking of there's something like that and you oh. can be like yeah well you could totally have a uh like a dragon heart type setting where <laughs> you've got this duo with this one guy goes and poisons this water supply and then the cleric comes in and cures it for money it's like yeah. you could totally shill towns like that i was i was sitting here thinking to myself because like i for some reason i keep playing uh monks i, I don't know why ne- next next character i play in D will not be a monk i have i want to play other classes <laughs> But do you know? I, I mean, I do. getting to know one class is still fun. But we're talking well, about hit points. Well, so. yeah, because there's a lot or of different health. There's there's a lot of different schools for for monks too, and they're all pretty cool. But I am realizing, like at tenth level, a monk is literally just immune to disease and poison. Yeah, um, <laughs> paladins are similar. Yeah, they're just, just they're just like you know what? Yeah. I mean, monks are really fun because at twentieth level, they're just like, hey, you know what? I'm like an extra planner being. I don't age. I don't disease. I can talk yeah. any language I want. They're like, I'm pretty self sufficient. Fuck off. Yeah, I can speak any language. I I can, I never age. I I don't require food or water. Yeah, no, boy, monk life is great once you get to level twenty. I'll tell you. Um, but, uh, the thing that's interesting about that is, so I think, I, I felt like when I saw hit points and they were so indicative to Dungeons and Dragons, it was because that's sort of, that's sort of coming like part of the system. Like the system has always used hit points, right? As far as I'm aware, yes. Yeah. Okay. Which is why when you look at other systems where they make a more abstract version of that. Um, I find that really intriguing. So you you were mentioning Warhammer. The other one that we've talked about not too long ago was Savage Worlds that have a, a wound system. And then you take penalties for those wounds. Um, yeah. And that, that makes sense. Um, I liked that idea because, one, it actually, from a narrative standpoint, I think it's more interesting just because you can say... Well, what is my wound, and how does that affect me, and what penalties am I going to take, and am I going to have to like literally change my playstyle because I am working with an injured arm? I mean, to be fair, if D and D and stuff like that were more realistic, mm-hmm. it would be very, very lethal. Yeah, um, because it would be like, oh, cool, I got smashed for with a a mace. I got hit first. Somebody smashed me for twenty points of damage in the skull. Yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to assume that if we were really talking about realism, your your hit points would probably be like 10. And anything that does more than that amount of damage is probably going to kill you. I mean, that's where the, the old Warhammer systems were really lethal, is because it was a D10 system. Right. And pretty much every weapon you had did like a D10 worth of damage. 
Yeah, so basically you can be knocked out with one hit if you... You absolutely could. Yeah. If it was a good hit. And it was like, yeah. all right, cool. So how do you mitigate that? Well, you go you have armor and those <coughs> systems generally have armor that mitigates damage right whereas D D has armor that makes it harder to hit you right but you could still think of that the same way as mm -hmm. like the armor doesn't make it harder to hit you but it makes it harder to hurt you uh right right but it's never explained in D D in that sense it's you have an ac of this if you don't beat that ac then you have been missed and i'm right. like but a dragon has like an ac of 22 and i have a really hard time believing that you in close combat with a dragon are missing it feels like in melee combat it should be a little bit easier to hit most of the, especially with a target that large like it almost feels like if you have a target that big your melee attacks should have been with advantage or something to that effect or well see here's the thing about a dragon though for this specific example mm. i've always put it through as the point of you hit the dragon mm -hmm. i don't care what you roll unless you were really bad you hit the dragon but you don't hurt the dragon right because it's got scales and right has pretty tough hide right that's why like when the system i had made mm -hmm. the dice was uh low chance to miss then you had a chance to glance and then hit normally and then critically hit right because a glance was like well you hit it but you didn't really hit it well you're you're kind of the blow kind of skittered off there it didn't really hurt it a lot right well that kind of reminds me of uh, i'll go back to fallout for a minute because they do have interesting things when it comes to to health in that series but if you were familiar with like uh, fallout 3 and then new vegas their their kind of damage mitigation for those are actually pretty different uh fallout 3 had damage reduction and then new vegas had a damage threshold and so the way that that had worked is in like a fallout 3 and i think that they brought it back for four um it was a reduction of the amount of damage that you would generally take. So this is like a 3% or something. So you would start taking off percentages, essentially, of what the damage would be from any source. And in New Vegas, the damage threshold would basically end up being a certain number. And it worked a little bit like AC. You wouldn't take very much damage if it was below that, but then you would basically start taking full damage if it was above. Yeah, and, that, that's yeah. similar to like what they do in, 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 in the Warhammer in, systems. Because yeah. you have an armor rating, it's like you have an armor rating of 5, which means you soak 5 points of damage with that armor. Right. If something doesn't do more than 5 points of damage, your armor has taken that damage and dispersed it, and you don't get hurt. Right. Um, now, the other system that I am familiar with, and uh, I wanted to bring this up so that i can actually look at it um is uh is open legend the the thing that's interesting about open legend is um they actually tried to simplify this so instead of uh doing the two hit and then figuring out damage it's all done with one roll it kind of works the way you were talking about with like the with like the dragon where it's like well if you don't get this much then you basically you've hit the dragon but it doesn't do any damage um, they extrapolated that out to um, hitting up against either guard, toughness, or resolve, which are sort of like, you know, things that are like a physical thing and then like uh, a, 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 almost an immunity kind of thing and a magical thing. Uh, you have a number. If uh, you go to roll for your attack and it's less than that number, you have basically done no damage. If it's more than that, you get the damage that is over that number. So my guard is 10. And uh, they, you know, with, with whatever attack they're trying to do up against it, uh, roll 12 or 13, I end up taking three points of damage. Because See, it's a but does that, does that actually simplify it, or does that make it just a different level of complicated? Math? Well, it makes it so that you have to do math. Well, that's, that's the thing, because if you go, all right, we're only going to have one roll, but you are up against three different things depending what you're doing right it doesn't simplify it because it just kind of changes what you're doing it's it, it, it would depend on whether you figure calculating out the the math on it or doing 
the roles are more, uh, you know, laborious. Like, if there's more math, it's not simplifying it because you have to still do more, just you don't have to roll as many times. So you're taking away part of the action that you have to do, but you're complicating the action itself. Right. I, I can uh, I can see that. I mean, I guess there there's going to be trade-offs regardless of what you do. You just have to determine, like, what those trade-offs are going to be. Yeah. Um, well, that's why you said simplified it, but then I'm like, well, that's not really simplifying it if you have to do more math to begin with. As opposed to that, if I just miss in D&D... I don't have to calculate anything. It's like, you missed. Cool. Don't need to try and calculate damage now because Mm -hmm. I didn't do any. Yeah. The other thing that's really lethal uh, about Open Legend is because it has exploding dice, uh, you can pretty much be taken out with one hit if they're they're just rolling crits on their dice. (laughs) Well, I mean, the same with Warhammer. As I said, everything is a D10, but it's also D10s that explode. Yeah. So you're like, I have a soak of eight. You're like, cool. I got a crit. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then I'm going to go, I just rolled 16 points of damage, you only soak 8, and you only have 5 hit points. Bye. OL has, uh, it's like your d20 and all of your bonus dice can all explode if they hit the highest number. Yeah. So <laughs> it can get really pretty interesting Yeah. how yeah. certain dice mechanics work for some of the hit points and wounds and yeah. armors. Well, yeah, and that kind of brought me to the thing, because it always, it always made me a little nervous, because I was like, oh my god. You know, it's like, here's here's the big bad guy at the end of the of the whole thing. And, and oh, well, crap. Uh, you, 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 like, got two crits on your, on, on your D20, and I guess he's dead. Well, I mean, that's the same with D&D, though, because you can still critically hit for, like, double or triple damage. Right, right. Or even quadruple damage, depending, like, what weapon you have. And the thing with that is, like, you, you constantly give me crap for killing players. I do. But, like, that boar story, Mm. it wasn't because I was trying to murder them, it's because I rolled a crit. Right. And then I rolled max damage on the crit, and I don't pull my punches just because the dice go, Welp, you're screwed. Right, right. It's It's like, I did 40 damage to players that shouldn't have been fighting the thing to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. And they knew they shouldn't have. Right. So it's like, all right, well, this thing can maim you to begin with. Yep. And it just so happened to crit. I... So not only did it just, like, maim you dead, yep. it maimed you dead and brutalized your body on the way. Right. And that's kind of one of those weird things, too, where I sit there and I, I imagine your two players that are literally impaled on the tusk of this boar, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, that feels like it's definitely a wound. Like, if you came back, there would be penalties. If there was any way for you to survive that. They didn't technically survive. They both actually died, but one got resurrected. Oh. Okay. From the dead. Yeah. Yeah. No, it killed them. Outright killed them. Yeah. They were dead. They found the corpses. But when that one di- dude got resurrected, did he still have, like, the hole through his chest? Like, <laughs> I mean, he probably had a pretty gnarly scar from it. He had a gnarly scar. Well, you know. When uh, Hephaestus died and got resurrected... He had a gnarly ass scar right across his chest That's because crazy. he got gored. Yeah. So like, imagine a dragonborn with scales over his body, but across his chest is just this big old scar. Yeah. 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 I know. Might have been missing scales. I'm not quite sure. We didn't get into the details, but he he had a a nice visible wound from that. That just makes him look cool. I mean, he already looked cool. He was he was a dragonborn and a were tiger. A were tiger dragonborn. Yeah, I remember and, that. And he could turn into bears. I think the scar persisted through his forms. Oh, okay. Uh, That's don't quote sweet. me on that, but that would be cool. It would just be like, yeah, even when you transform, that scar is still there. Hey, uh, you know, since we're actually talking about transformation, uh, hit points when it comes to transforming into things is uh, interesting. Because, like, so if, I, so if I'm uh, a person who likes to shapeshift into other stuff, and then that as you are I, I love to it's it's my every day when you're like in a transformed state so you're you are you are bear hephaestus or whatever dragon bear is what Dra- we called him dragon bear okay yeah beware the dragon bear comes when he uh gets uh taken to zero hit points what happens then i believe in 3 uh, not 3 5 i believe in 5e five. When a druid and shapeshift is taken down to zero, mm. I believe they are knocked out, but yeah. they revert to their 
normal form, but I don't have the rules up in front of me right now. Right. I um, I th- I think that is correct because uh, we have a druid in our party, and I think that we we figured. Like that I want to say they're knocked out, I, but if they I revert so. before that, yeah. If they revert with any hit points left, they're back to their normal form, right? With full hit points. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's full hit points or if it's the amount of hit points they had before they transformed. Which oh, sorry, is... you're right. It's the amount they would have had before they transformed. Yeah, see, I just learned like something. if you transform and you get temporary hit points because mm-hmm. your constitution's higher, right? As say a bear, you don't keep the temporary hit points when you revert. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But if you are at lower than your max HP when you transform, you still get the max HP of the animal you turn into. Okay. So yeah, it's really interesting because, you know, druids can soak a lot of damage in D&D. Mm. Because they can go, I'm going to turn into a bear. Yeah. And then I'm going to revert. Hmm. And then I'm going to lower on HP and I'm going to re- turn into a bear again. I always, I kind of like that. It, it even made me think, like, maybe one day I might want to play a druid. There's other classes i want but but just the idea that like hey now i'm in like a tiger form um screw it if i die i'll just revert back so uh, i I feel like i have like a second chance regardless of what happens right now (laughs) i I mean yes and no i mean you got to remember too with that comes the fact that you can only use that twice per short rest that's still pretty good, though. But you don't want to be like, well, I'm going to turn into a cat for five minutes, and now I'm not a cat. Because they're like, that was a waste of that. So, like, when I would do it, I'd be like, cool, I'm going to turn into this animal, and I'm going to stay in that form for, like, a while. Right. Because it was right. it was just like, well, I'm going to go explore the city as a house cat, because inconspicuous. Right. And I can. So it's like, I can stay in this form for, like, two hours, so I'm going to. The interesting thing is, like, when you have those limited usage between short rests or long rests, you do start really thinking about how you want to utilize them, not necessarily yeah. knowing when you're going it, to. It's use. similar with, like, a, a Warlock's uh, spell slots. Yeah. Because they only get a couple of them, mm-hmm. depending on their level. They only start with, like, two spell slots, and they get a couple more later on. Yeah, yeah. I think. Better they only have two to begin with. I yeah. think they don't get many spells no. that you can use. But now cantrips? Just cast your cantrips they, all damn day. I mean, cantrips are great. <laughs> the warlock cantrips are insane. They only get a couple actual spell slots that aren't cantrips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they cast them at the highest level they can cast them, so it doesn't matter what they are, they all count as, like, later on they'll be like, oh, these all count as a fifth level spell. Right. So you're casting all your spells at that level. Right. No matter what spell it is. Yeah. So if it can level up to a fifth level spell you're, it is going to you're in pretty good shape which means some of their spells get nasty yeah. but they regain their spells on a short rest but they have very limited use of them between those so right. it's like all right what am i going to use mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah i uh, uh the one thing that i get that i uh, i only have one cantrip and it's minor illusion but the fun thing is minor illusion you can play around with so much you can have yeah. you can have so much fun. The other you can take people's noses. I can take really. other people's noses and do, do got your nose. Then the uh, then the other time I needed to be in disguise. So and uh, again, giant glowing turtle. But I decided to make one of those Groucho Marx masks for my face with the glasses and the nose and the little mustache. And I I use Seems minor illu- yeah I, I use the mi- minor illusion to put that on my face so no one could tell who I was. <laughs> Was, I'm sure. I'm sure that worked. Yeah, it worked great. <laughs> it's so so well. I'm doing a good job. But I am really interested in the idea of of like wounds and penalties and what those penalties should be. Um. So I, I mean, I know that it's usually it has something to do with uh, dice rolls. You know that I'm gonna start taking negatives to my my bonuses. Essentially, I'm gonna start. I'm I'm getting less as time goes on. Um, what do you think uh, penalties should really entail, though, if you have wounds? It, it depends. It really does. Like, a system like D&D, where you, get, you could get negatives a couple of times and still be okay. Mm-hmm. But other games, it's like, you could get, like, a negative one or two and you'd be fine. You'd be screwed. Mm-hmm. Like, it'd be like, cool, I can't do anything because I actually have a negative to it. Like, some games don't even have, like, modifiers. 
Right. So those wouldn't really be helpful. Mm. But like, I feel like a way you could do it with like a system that was roll and keep, for instance, that we talked about. Okay. I forget. Legend of Five Rings. Was that it? Yeah. I, it's another system I got to get more familiar with. I, I don't know much about LFI. But like, if you had like a roll and keep or a, a dice pool system, mm-hmm. like um, World of Darkness, for instance. Yeah. Uh, unless the new one is not a dice pool. Mm. But, like, you could take a dice pool system, and if you got wounds, you could acquire negatives to the amount of dice you could roll, for okay. instance. Imagine that I'm stupid for a minute. Uh, yes, okay. that's not hard to imagine. Okay, done. In a nutshell, just so I kind of have an idea, roll and keep. What does that actually entail? Do you want me to explain what that is I kinda, really quick I, I, for you? Yeah, I want you to just kind of flush that out I, for I, me. Too. I know we went over it, but I'll go for it. Well, because it's, it's one of those things that I kind of I kind of understand, but I don't really understand. So a roll and keep system would be like in L5R, the older one that I played, it was you had a skill and your skill would determine how many dice you could roll. And it would also determine how many of those dice that you have rolled you can keep. Okay. So you roll a pool of dice. So say you have roll three, keep one. You'd roll three dice, and you'd only get to pick one of those dice that you want to keep. Gotcha. Okay. So the more dice you have, the bigger the chances. Mm-hmm. But then the lower, the higher the amount you can keep, depending on the system, is the better you can do as well. So like if oh. you, I, had a, I think I had a character that had like roll five, keep three. So it is dice pools. You you want to be able to roll enough dice to make your skill check. So basically, the more dice that I roll and the less dice that I actually have to choose from is probably better. Generally. Depends if you're aiming higher, aiming for low numbers. Depends on the target system. Okay. Okay. But chances are, if I have a thing where I roll three dice and I keep three dice, <laughs> that's not... That's not. That's just rolling three dice. That's just yeah. rolling three dice, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So that kind of system, it's used for, for everything. It's used for uh, figuring out checks and damage and, and all of that. Um, I haven't played in several years. Okay. But I want to say, yeah, I think it was used for skill checks and like damage stuff. I mean, well. it would it would make sense for me if you're going to create a dice pool system that you would pretty much just use it for anything dice require. Yeah, but. generally with dice mechanics, you keep the mechanics simple and uniform throughout. That's why I like D and D is everything uses the D twenty to figure out if you pass or fail, right? And then the dice that you use to determine the like what happens is different from our conversation with uh Aram and Aviv uh when they were talking about Savage Worlds that system is one where you basically just have to get four or higher and then it's all about what you get for bonuses or or not and as you accrue ru- wounds you start taking penalties to those rolls so it becomes progressively harder to hit the number you have to in order to be successful at things and so as you as you start to get like three wounds or something like that, it it becomes nigh on impossible. <laughs> it gets it gets really difficult to actually roll over uh on that. But that makes sense. It does. It absolutely does. Um it also makes me terrified, but I, I do appreciate that. Since we are talking about wounds, I should uh talk about roll to dodge because we did use that on our uh, Operation Santa Drop, which was uh, James' system that he's working on. And the way he handles hit points is very interesting. He actually has a hybrid system in that. There, there are wounds, but they're kind of organized in hit points. So, like, at every time you take, like, essentially three hit, uh, five hit points, sorry, five hit points worth of damage, um, it accrues a wound. Now you take a penalty. So as you, as you start stacking that up, but it's not just you get hit, you get a wound. If it's a uh, you know a light wound, you might only take like two fifths of a wound, and then another one you're going to get something full, and you can take like X number of those wounds. So you almost have to think of it as like a scale when um, something kind of like when Fallout tries to figure out radiation damage, and you know every every time you hit certain marks, you start taking penalties when you get to those marks. It, yeah. It's it's sort of like that kind of system. That that's similar to the Warhammer one from before. Oh, okay, is because you had light lightly wounded, 
moderately wounded and severely wounded. Mm. Yeah. And light wounds again would heal faster. Moderate wounds would heal slower. Right. And then heavy or severe wounds would heal sl- very slowly okay. and usually required medical attention to heal. Okay. Well, now that that brings me to something that I I wanted to talk about, which is the idea of healing. And I wanted to touch on this because you you don't like the idea of healing during combat, or you were I, talking about maybe not having that. I I don't like it because it doesn't let you feel mortal. Okay. In a lot of cases, if you've just like in D and D, let's say you've got a healer. Do you have a healer in your party? Uh yes, we do. When you when you take damage, do you do they just heal you? They will try to either regain uh, some of our hit points or give us blessings that will make it uh, harder for people to hurt us. Okay, well, the regaining hit point part is the one I'm not a fan of in combat. Okay. Because I like the idea that you feel mortal. You feel like your life is in danger Mm -hmm. in combat because it should feel like it's in danger. You're swinging swords at each other. If you're not feeling like you might die... There's and a you're stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Like, realistically, you're stupid. <laughs> it's like, I'm in a gunfight. I don't feel like I'm going to die at all. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Bang! Yeah. And then, <laughs> I am invincible. Nope. If you have the ability to heal in the middle of combat, you may be very bold in the way you approach situations, figuring yeah. that you're going to get healed. Yeah. I mean, with the game that David ran for Bo and I, we both had the capability to heal lightly, because Bard and Druid both get healing spells, uh, access to them. Mm. But it was only two of us. We weren't dedicated healers. Mm-hmm. We, would have had, we would have to prepare the heal spell in order to use it. Well, in my case, he could cast spontaneously. Okay. But it was like, I would keep, wo- I would keep like one, just in case. Yeah. And he could use um, like a, a healing word. To do light healing as well. But when we got down to the point where we were having to use heal spells, it was usually to get the other person from being unconscious. Right. Right. So at that point, it was, oh crap, things have gone south, quickly heal my partner, and run. Yeah. Yeah. And we did. We had several times where we got in over our heads. Yeah. Had to quickly heal our partner so they weren't dead. Mm-hmm. And ran the hell out of there. I knew one time uh, he had gotten knocked out. I went, oh crap, I can't handle this by myself. Because we're greatly outnumbered right here. We should not be fighting these knights right now. Yeah. I uh, healed him and grabbed him, as I did. Turned into a horse as I slung him on my back and then ran out of the town we were in. <laughs> yep. And we had like a chase scene where I was on horseback and he was barely awake clinging to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh that's by cool. on horseback, I mean I was a horse. You were the horse he was on my back. Yeah. I uh that that I can see that being really problematic when there are like literally two of you in the game. <laughs> because realistically one of you goes down and uh you really don't have a support system after that. <laughs> like, no, and it you're it made us approach combat yeah. differently than it, you would if you had a full party with a dedicated healer. Right. Um, conversely, uh, I have a party of uh, six, and we're surprisingly... Ca- actually, it's funny because Dom keeps kind of going, I don't know how you keep a- being able to handle these situations so well. But we... Um, we uh it, like ended up in this chamber and uh things looked kind of creepy but for some reason uh one of us tried to go down into a hole and uh found a a skeleton naga that was down there and um uh pull her back up and uh a couple members of her party are kind of like maybe uh run toward the the uh entrance uh, and uh, and get on out of here uh, but, you know, uh, the the couple fighters that we have are kind of like going, uh, well, I'm not quite sure what's coming because, you know, we we haven't really been apprised yet. Um, I'm just going to get ready over this hole and uh, see if we can take it out. So we came out of that fight basically unscathed and we killed that thing. 
we have like a ranger with Colossus Slayer, and and we and we have you know we have like a a, a druid that can cast you know entangled thorns. Actually, we entangled like into the hole, so it's taking damage on the way up. A sorceress that's casting lightning. You know, we like and and a and a, a very small barbarian that is very happy to use an axe, and then Rembrandt punches things with a with a quarter staff. Is basically see, but that's still like compared to my party. Yeah, that's still way more damage output oh, and yeah. way more utility mm-hmm. than we had. Yeah. We literally had a druid that could shape shift and a bard mm-hmm. who could do bard things, and he yeah. wasn't a good bard. He he liked to smash things more than he liked yeah. to bard things. Yes. <laughs> I mean, exactly. he was not a bad bard, but he was also an orc. He was temperamental. Right. Yeah. And it was um it it was really interesting because I think when we actually looked at it afterward, we were like, did anyone get damaged? No. No. I think Connor might be shocked from being inside the mouth of the thing for a minute, but otherwise <laughs> I yeah. think he'll get over that. He didn't take any actual physical damage. Except but yeah, track. when you have a dedicated healer mm-hmm. and you know you've got that support system, yeah, and your party members that can make sure you don't like die outright, right? You play a lot differently than if you don't have that, right? So to get back to your initial question about healing and combat yeah. and why I don't like it, mm-hmm. that's why. Okay. Now you you did say though you can have a health potion or something on you for when I DM or in the system I want that I need to get back to making at some point in time. I won't let people just be like dedicated healers. It's like you need to do something else that doesn't fly here. I mean, like I don't I don't mind if you want to be a healer. That's fine, but I don't want you to just sit there. I want you to be more useful. Yeah, and feel like there's more you can do than just sit there and go heal heal right heal yeah. heal well and the, the thing about it is a support class has a lot of other functionality besides that um, they do but know. in a lot of cases healers tend to just kind of heal right uh well the the interesting thing is actually one of the most useful things that like our our priestess does essentially in the party is like when we get blessings because it just makes our stats better like we like when we roll, we just get bonuses to rolls. You know, we and that's we just fine. Gain stuff, and it makes it harder for enemies to hit us, and easier for us to deal damage. I would much rather have someone be like, "Cool, I'm gonna use these spells that are utility and help buff the party and support the party," mm-hmm. than just directly like make your hit points go back up when you've been hit. Right. Well, like uh, my my character who is a shadow monk, but very bad at being stealthy is yes. still, since he knows shadow arts, does have the advantage of uh, making the rest of the party stealthy. Because, like, uh, I've found something that's very useful is that Remy can cast um, Pass Without Trace. So if you're going into a stealth situation with him, um, he can just do that, and then it makes it real easy for even the other characters in your party to succeed at stealth checks. and so. Because what it does is it basically gives like a. I know what pass okay. without trace does. To me. <laughs> it gives you plus ten yeah. to stealth. Yeah, I know. For a whole hour, which is great. We were doing a stakeout, and you can't be tracked. You can't be tracked, except for by magical means. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So that's pretty great. It makes it. Uh, it makes it way easier when you were doing. We were doing a stakeout. It makes it great for that. I, I actually, I think that there was a point where. Dom was kind of like going, um, we'll just say you succeed to get to do the whole stealth mission. You're, you're fine. It's like, I, I don't know what to tell you. It'd be really hard to fail stealth checks at this point. Those are all really good. You know, they help out the party in other ways. Um, it does feel a teeny bit re- unrealistic, and I've seen this in so many systems. It's like, hold up a second. I got to deal with this. Uh, let me just use a med pack. In the middle of combat. I mean, like, here we go. That's the big thing for, like, when I was designing mine. I wanted healing to be more ritualistic because I wanted it to be, like, healing takes time Mm -hmm. and doing it correctly so your bones don't set incorrectly when they've been broken, for instance, and so that your skin actually knits back together properly. Right. It takes a lot of concentration. Right. 
Um, and so just being like, oh, you're healed in the middle of combat doesn't really strike me as concentrating much. And that does speak to realism, too. I mean, if we're, we're you know, it's, it's kind of, you can get stabilized in the middle of an actual fighting situation if you are in actual combat. But you really need to have time to heal that is outside of that. Um, so, you know, there's, there's something to be said. I think that maybe that's an idea, is if you have a system where you can be stabilized, you know, while you're in combat, uh, if you are taking any kind of, like, long-range status effects, um, if you, if you are accruing, like, wounds or something like that, where you can get stabilized somehow, or keep that from being, preventing that from getting worse... But in order to actually, you know, heal and go back to full, you would have to be out of combat. Yeah. Yeah, I guess what I've really learned is that uh, the whole idea of health is, depending on the system that you're using, there's a lot of different ones out there. But it is definitely more complicated than just simply looking at a hit point number, uh, even in systems that use hit points. It's, it's more than that. Uh, and it's more than meets the eye. It's always more than meets the eye. Uh, and, you know, if you lose hit points in your eyes, does that mean you can't see where you're going if you're trying to do a shadow uh, step? I assume it means your eyes have been destroyed and you need to seek immediate, like, yeah. wishing help. That would be an interesting idea, too. Like, if you had wounds that were specific to certain things, like, say, like, I got wounded on the face and, like, right now I can't see. Like, I'm temporarily blinded. Uh, now I need to be able see, to see a point see, that I'm teleporting to. I can't, so I can't use... See, here, here's the thing with ragdolling your hit points out like that. Yeah. Um, it becomes really unwieldy. Yeah, I can see And by that. unwieldy, I mean, it's not like it can't be done. It's that suddenly you've, de you've designated body parts having specific amounts of hit points. And that means you're going to immediately aim for the parts that have the lowest. Well, it, it means what you have made is VATs. You've made a VAT system where you're targeting specific areas with spe specific ability to hit them. And chances are you're going to try to hit the head. Yeah, for instance, your head would have less hit points in your core. Or successfully hitting something in the head would be like a critical, because it is a critical weak spot. <laughs> um, so... That would be really good. Might be harder to hit because it's smaller, but it would also deal a lot more damage when you do. That is a very complex system that you'd be making, which is probably yeah. why they simplify it a whole lot. But if, if we were doing a power surge right now and we were making Fallout into a game, that would be something you might consider doing <laughs> into a tabletop it, game. And then you would have to give negatives to hitting specific locations that are not the core body you'd have to have There's percentages a yeah or something to that not effect. or just negatives like oh you get a negative three to try and hit, hit the head you know because people would still do it though you know what you would have to do uh, i i'm almost thinking that this is you'd have to have like a d100 that would then just be um the system for warhammer <laughs> right well no what 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 i'm thinking of is if you have like a 95 percent chance which is usually what you tap out and, and fall out, to hit something, you would have to just roll better than a 5 on the dice, because it's pretty likely that you're going to hit. But if you only have, like, a 1% chance to hit something, you would have to, like, compl you would have to get a 100. Because you'd have to, like, roll over that overall 100 uh, point value in order for it to Nathan, work. if you ever want to see how that system would actually play out, we need to get a game of any of the Warhammer games together. Oh, because they basically did that? It, it, yeah, it is a D100. It's a percentile system with D10s. I see. So if I have like a 70% chance to hit and I roll better than a 30, I've made up that overall 100 difference, and now I can... Yeah, so there, the problem with this system, though, is that it's really clunky sometimes because there's a lot no. of different ways to mod... <laughs> there's a lot of different ways to modify your hits. Yeah, right. Like... Cool, I'm going to shoot at that guy. I'm going to take a full round aim action. Yeah. I'm going to have a a scope. I have this and that in there at they're at medium range and it's like I'm doing a full auto burst. Yeah. It's like 
So there's like 15 different ways to modify that one shot you're taking, and it makes the game take so long to do those things. Yeah, I think that that's... That, that is always going to be a problem with almost every mechanic that you end up looking at, is how much time are you going to take on these? Because um, I don't know how much I really want to do. It's Like, if you ever do want to play that, we can totally do it. Okay. It's fun. Yeah. It's, it's really fun, but you're going to go, oh, man. Wasn't there that one game, like, I can't remember what it was called. I'll have to look it up. When they were talking about, like, the worst RPGs ever made, there was one that was like a a battlegrounds game where they got into the thing where it was all about like okay you have the tanks and now figure out the trajectory and what is your what is your angle and what is the wind speed and what is the and it's like do we ever play the game <laughs> like is there... yeah i don't i don't know which one that is i don't i i'll have to i'll have to look it up and i will oh found it phoenix command don't know it it was it was uh You're welcome. mechanics such as varying times to aim based off square root of a firearm barrel length. Oh, okay. I didn't know the name of it, but yes. Yeah, it's, that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh so Probabilitor! We're gonna play a game of dungeons, dungeons, and more dungeons. Yes. Yeah. I like this I like this little thing that I see little little interesting tidbit. After the the uh financial failure of the company that made it, their founder went back to designing rockets for the aerospace industry. <laughs> Well, at least he uh, knows the math he was using. That is probably a better use of your time, sir. Thank you for that. What would be your most preferable system? My preferable system would be the easiest to keep track of. Mm hmm Just because it's easy. Yeah. It doesn't have to be crazy in depth. It doesn't have to be super realistic. But, like, hit points works. Mm hmm It doesn't deal with complex systems, like, about wounds and negative modifiers or positive modifiers. But it works. It works for what it does. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the happy medium that there should be. Wounds mm -hmm. can be interesting. Yeah. Different parts of your health can be interesting. Mm -hmm. But they need to work well. They need to not be super complicated. That's the biggest drawback, is a lot of those systems tend to be complicated. No, I, I get you. you know, hit points work. They're, they're easy to follow. They're easy to understand. They're easy to track. And that's why you see them so much. I just, I think that that's why. It's just, it, it's, it's there. People are used to it. People understand how it works. And, um, and it's easy for players to keep track of. Yeah. Um, it, it's definitely the middle ground between easy to use and remember. Yeah. And making sense. Right. Whereas, I don't know what could be easier than that. Yeah. But there's a lot that could be harder than that. <laughs> right, right. Because, you know, a wound system and those kinds of things are really interesting, um, but it always, I, I always kind of wondered how, well, like, okay, I have X number of wounds, how do I accrue them? Am I going to be able to track that? What do I have to remember yeah. now, you know? For, for instance, that goes to the, like, similar with dice mechanics, it goes to the, the ideas of opposing roles. Oh, yes. Where it's like, you know, you can have opposing roles in your game, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But are you really okay with the amount that it's going to slow your game down? Right, right. And and that is something Warhammer did as well. There was, you could dodge in combat, for instance. Mm -hmm. So it's like, cool, I'm going to roll to hit. It's like, okay, you did. They're going to roll to dodge your hit. Mm -hmm. So it's roll versus roll. But it bogs down your combat so much by doing that. Yeah, it's... um. It, it's an interesting so, idea that, you know, you just have two people rolling uh, to figure this one thing out uh, when you could have one that's a stationary number and, and it, it goes up against that stationary number for the other person. Um, see, like, I keep bringing Warhammer up because it was, it was a really interesting and it can be a really fun system to play, mm -hmm. but it's also not very user interface friendly okay like there's a lot that's really good in it but there's also a lot that's just really clunky yeah and they streamlined it too at the end uh, i think dark heresy second edition or only war streamlined it a lot more than it was mm -hmm. and that happens when you have games go from edition to edition to edition mm. it helps streamline all the things that were kind of clunky yeah 
Like even talking to Dom, yeah. Honor One versus Honor Version Two mm-hmm. is much more streamlined. Yeah, yeah. But that's just the progression of game systems. Figuring out what works, what doesn't work, what yeah was kind of meh. What was oh that's great. We should do that more. Right. And it it really is fascinating to see the evolution of game systems do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you go, all right, how did this mechanic evolve from this to that? Right. Like. Yeah. Because, I mean, you had even mentioned, like, 5e is a lot more user-friendly now than... 5e is a lot more Mm newbie-friendly, and it's a lot more simplified than, like, 3.5 was. Right. Because, Nathan, Mm -hmm. how do you figure out your skills? Uh, they're kind of figured out for me based on what my class and my, my race are. Kinda, yeah. You, you have the options to take what skills you want. Mm Mm-hmm. And then you have um, to have proficiency in those skills. And then it's just proficiency, maybe expertise. Yeah. And then your skill modifier. Yeah. 3.5 was here are your class skills. Here's a big pool of skill points. Assign them as you wish. Uh, yeah. Yep. Which meant you could, you know, min max your skills, be like, I want to be really good at stealth, and that's it. So you dump all your points into stealth. Yeah. And nothing else. Yeah. No, skills were, were pretty much figured out for me based on what my stats were and what my class got for proficiencies and what my, as a total, I knew that I got survival as a proficiency, so that's already calculated out. So I get my bonuses for those. So it's pretty easy to track all of that. Um, Plus there were way more skills in 3.5 than there are in 5e, so... Yeah, no, there's only like 20 or so in 5e. On, only 20 or so. <laughs> there, there were way more in 3.5. In 3.5 there were a lot more. There was, there was a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they combined certain things, like stealth was move silently and hide yeah. before, so they combined that down. Yeah, well, I mean... I think they got rid of a couple knowledge skills. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think survival... Uh, survival's in here. There, there was survival. there was a use rope skill. There's a swim skill. Oh yeah, they've they've yeah t- kind of took things and kind of compressed. Them. Yeah, I think if you want to use a rope, you just use survival for that now, <laughs> typically. Or dexterity. Maybe dexterity. Yeah, you you might be able. To anyways, do that. I actually have anyways. two extra skills. I have confusion and misconception, and I get plus fifty to those. I'm very good at getting confused and and, and oh, okay. misconceiving things. That's canon now. I don't usually have to oh, roll good. for that. But if any time somebody asks me, how confused are you? I can roll, and I get a plus 50 to that to find out how confused I am. Is it to find out how confused you are, yes. or how confused you actually are? How confused I actually am. So you're always at least 50% confused? Only when confusion rears its ugly head do I get super confused. I'm either completely aware of the situation, or incredibly confused at any given time. That sounds like your normal life. Yep, so pretty much. That That's all I do, all day long. Uh, so, Alex, if uh, folks out there were interested in finding out more information about Delve, where could they go? I don't know. I'm confused. I'm Nathan. You have you have plus 52 confusion <laughs> right now. Sorry. You can find more information about Delve over at DelveCast.com. Yeah, you can find all of our shows and uh, accoutrement over there. And uh, while you are over at that site, please check out our Patreon uh, for just a whole dollar a month. You can get all of our like work product, uh, some of the uh, extended episodes that have some of us just, you know, talking and, and kind of off topic a little bit and uh some of our draft projects and other things that we've done you can find it all over there uh pretty easily i also want to thank our shiny level patrons bonnie ainsworth and dominic perry uh for uh being so shiny that they keep the digital lights on in the uh studio because you're so shiny that's right so are we not singing moana right now uh we oh oh boy we should uh no i think that's probably something yeah copyrighted well so yeah know, and it's disney and they're not gonna like that um no actually i was thinking shine get we 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 got shines yeah you, you like thinking about shine gets anyways you can also find us on uh facebook you can uh follow us on the delvecast group and you can find us on twitter i am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delve Podcast. And uh, after you go and uh, check out all of that, make sure to uh, subscribe 
and like and do all of those things on podcast applications such as iTunes, Google Play, and now Spotify of all places. So you can find us on all of those formats and probably a whole lot more. I'm always surprised. Like, I'll look at different aggregate sites like, hey, this is a podcast portal. And it's like, oh, we're on there. Okay, cool. So if you use one of those, just look us up. It's probably there. All of our stuff probably is. <laughs> Not hard to find. Uh, so, uh, until the next time that we, uh, hear from all of you, I hope that you're all having, uh, a healthy and, uh, happy winter times if you're in the United States. You know, hopefully your health, your hit points are still pretty high, you know, coming off the holiday season. Hopefully you don't, hopefully you don't need a medic is what you're trying to say. You don't need a medic, you don't need a med pack or a stim pack or a healing potion. And uh, thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. So it's kind of like, cool, I have a lot of HP soak, even though you can only use it. Yeah. We're going to wait for a second. Sure. Because holy shit, that car was loud. Yeah. You heard that, You heard that, right? That was just... Somebody didn't care about Chester. mufflers. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was just a big truck. Anyway. Anyways. Plus, they get the ability to heal. Yeah. And if you're a Circle of the Moon Druid, you have the ability to use spell slots to heal as well. Wow. Apparently, it's street racing day. It's <laughs> you have too fast, too furious going on outside. Your team. Vin Diesel? <laughs> Vin, come on in. We're playing. Vin Diesel, come in. Vin we're Diesel. playing DB. We're all up a character. Hey. hey, how's everybody doing? You doing good? He's a lot more he's a lot more gravelly than yeah. that, Nathan. Sorry, I gotta get down here. Families! There we go, okay. Uh, <laughs> so